Vince Russell from Get Good with Vince here, off on another journey. This time we're going to explore using Rigify to create a facial rig. Well, in actuality, Rigify creates the facial rig. We just have to put the bones in the right places and it pretty much works. Now, last time we were here, we used the Rigify system to create a custom rig. This time we're going to just create a facial rig. But just like we did it before, let's start out by adding an armature. We hit Shift A, armature. This time we'll do a single bone because we don't want to include an entire rig. Okay? So our single bone appears at our point of origin. We got the head up here because we just kind of deleted the rest of the body. So we don't really need that single bone. So we'll tab into edit mode and hit X to delete it. So if we go to our armature tab, let's just set our options in front once again just so we can see our bones through our mesh. And if we go down to our Rigify buttons here at this point, we see we have our options, just like we built the rig before, building a leg, building an arm. I've got some extra options in here because I downloaded some um, other, I don't know what you'd call them, I guess Rigify packs. Uh, they were free online. I'll be talking about those probably in a future video. For now, let's just go with Rigify built in. And what do we want to do? We want to build a face. So we have our faces, super face. We'll choose that and click add sample. Adds it at our point of origin. So we just hit G. And I'll hit Z to keep it aligned on the z-axis and bring it right up here to the face. Now zooming in, we see that it's just a little bit too small for our face. So I'm going to scale that up. And you know what? Let's see. Let's undo that. Control Z, move it back down. I'm going to go into object mode because I want the uh, bottom of that rig, G, Z, to be right there at the, the bottom of the face that we do create. All right. Now we'll zoom in. All right, we see that it's a bit too small for the face, so let's just try to scale it in object mode for now. Uh, we'll hit S to scale it and bring it up. G, move that down to the chin. Let's see if we let's see if we can get the chin lined up first because it'll scale from that point. Uh, that's roughly about the right spot. And hit S to scale. Okay, scale it up. Can we get it to roughly the right size? It's not going to line up exactly, but let's see what we can do here. Uh, right about there maybe? That looks pretty good. Yeah, we can adjust it. Looks like the lips are pretty well lined up, nose is pretty well lined up. The eyes might take a little bit of work. Okay, so now it's in front, but let's turn it off real quick so we can see that our rig is, you know, partially embedded, which is what you want. Partially embedded in the face. So now let's go about adjusting the positions of the various bones. Now one thing you want to keep in mind here is once again this rig works off of um, a property or I don't know exactly what you call it, some kind of programming in a bone. So if we look over here at our bone tab and our rigify type, remember a bone will have a bone type, a tentacle, a finger, a hand, a leg, and it defines the functionality that is going to accompany that particular chain of bones. And if you look here, look, none of these bones on the face really have any definitions. You don't have a, like a nose type, a cheek, an eye, a brow, or anything like that. But if you look at this one link, uh, one, one, bleh, good grief, one bone here, you notice it's rigified type is faces, super face. And all of the other facial bones are parented to it. So that's telling us that all of the functionality that is available for this facial rig is going to, is, is embedded in this bone, I guess you could say. It's going to come from this bone. So we do not want to do anything to this bone um, other than move it around. We don't want to rename it. Actually, to say the truth, I don't think we want to delete or rename anything in this rig because we never know what we're going to need. All right, so this rig has a tongue as well as teeth and eyes, which we don't have in our mesh, but we can just leave them in there. We don't have to worry about those right now. So like I said, let's go about adjusting the bone positions uh, before we generate our rig. So a moment ago, I mentioned that I wasn't going to delete uh, the tongue and the eyes and the teeth, we could just leave them in. In actuality, you don't ever want to delete any parts of these rigs. Um, I've done it a few times and I've noticed errors popping up. It says certain bones are missing or certain functionality is missing. So just don't delete any of the bones. If you don't need them, um, you can always uh, set them later on, I guess, to not deform the mesh or weight paint uh, the mesh to not include those particular bones or delete the vertex groups or something. Uh, but just don't delete any of those bones. Now you notice as I move some of these bones, uh, I, I like to make sure they're embedded somewhat in the mesh. So you see me turning 
the in front option for the armature on and off. I find that the deformation works better and I think everybody knows this anybody who knows anything about rigging um, that if you don't get those bones kind of close to the skin uh, you're not going to get the best deformations you're not going to get the best weighting so try to make sure that the bones are just kind of um, embedded just a little bit in the mesh something else you want to make sure of also is not to separate any of the bones I don't think you see it here with what I'm doing but if you notice I am selecting the joints, not the bones, to move them around. Uh, and that's because some of the bones aren't connected. They are parented but not connected, so you can separate them. And if you separate them, then that could either uh, affect the functionality of the rig or break the rig altogether. So when you're moving the bones around, either select like uh, all of a group of bones. You can use the uh, link function, the L key, I believe it is to pick all the linked items and move them all together or try to select over top of the joint between two bones and move that to make sure that those bones stay uh, together. They may not be actually connected uh, together but uh, they're occupying the same space and Rigify does take that into consideration when generating your rig. Alright, so let's tab out of edit mode back into object mode and we'll come over here and generate our rig. Oh, wait a minute, let's check something first. Notice our scale is off because we scaled it up. So always make sure that we unify our scale or we apply our scale by hitting Control T. Now we notice our scale is one. Check our mesh as well, set to one so we're good to go there. So we'll select our armature and we will generate our rig. Takes just a moment and we have our rig according to the outliner but we don't see it. Let's just try the old standbys, Alt-H. Ah, okay, so it generated the rig at the position here, and I'll give you a second to try to figure out why. Okay, seconds up. And the reason why is because we applied our scale, but we didn't apply our location. Remember, I moved this in actual object space rather than edit space. This might come back to bite us here, but let's find out if we can somehow fix this by selecting our rig, hitting con com excuse me, Control A, and then let's apply our location. So now we have zero for the location. Uh, once again, applying those scales, locations, some new rotations, they are a lifesaver. So now let's generate a rig and see what happens. And this time it generates it in the correct location. Okay, so let's select our armature and we'll hide it. Take a quick look at our rig, tab into our pose mode and see yep we got our draw here got our eyes here eye controller main eye controller everything looks good let's tab back out into object mode select our mesh select our rig hit control P and choose with automatic weights it takes a split second practically to weight it and let's see what we've got control tab to go back into pose mode Let's just do a quick thing. We don't have eyes to follow, but let's just see how this looks. Okay, see, you notice the flesh of the eyes moving around just a little bit? That's a really nice, subtle movement we get there, something we get for free along with the rig. See how these eyes look. Yeah, that looks pretty awesome. I wish we had eyeballs in here now to test it out. I should have done that. We can get a nice eye close. We can automate that also with drivers. Let's check out our jaw. This is a, this is a big one. Let's rotate on X only. Oh, we didn't have neck bone, so the whole neck is moving. But that mouth, that moves pretty good. Got a little bit of stretch there. You see the nose moving just a little bit and the mouth open. Let's check these lips here. See, that looks great. Now, one thing I really want to stress here is the fact that this was done with no weighting of the mesh at all. This is just straight out of the box, the initial binding, um, and we get pretty good deformations. Imagine what we can do with some weighting, which we'll explore uh, hopefully in a future topic. Could get it to look a bit better. Well, could be it. But for a rig that I literally took, you know, five minutes to set up, it literally took me about five minutes, uh, maybe five or six minutes to set up these bones in these locations to get this uh, degree of functionality. I mean, it's just fantastic. That's why I really love Rigify. 
All right, now like I mentioned, we need some weight painting on here in order to get this to look good, but we will handle that in our, you know, maybe in our next video, maybe in another future video, but we're definitely gonna look into to weight painting to get these rigs to deform our meshes a bit better. Okay, quick one there for you. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope it helps you out. Um, and I'll see you next time.